What's up guys, in this video, I wanna follow my step-by-step -step method to be able to complete the square of a quadratic that not only has a coefficient, but also has fractions. All right, if you know anything about completing the square, you know this is probably not a problem that is gonna be very fun completing the square, but guess what? That's what I'm here for you, to do the problems that are not gonna be very fun and just record them by myself talking to a video camera. But hopefully you will find some value in this and I want you just to also, like I wanna go through those steps with you. So therefore when you have a difficult problem like this or maybe something easy, you know, these steps are just ingrained and you can just follow them on your own because that's a really important thing because completing the square is a very, very important process. It's very, very helpful, even though you might not want to possibly use it or would ever have to use it on a problem like this, I think it's important to really make sure you understand what you're doing and also make sure to understand how to complete the square. So let's kind of go through our steps that I've talked about in many, many other previous videos. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is group our terms. And remember when I'm talking about the terms that I'm gonna group, that is going to be my quadratic here and my linear term. I'm gonna leave the constant alone. We're just gonna kind of leave that preserved. This is gonna be what I'm gonna to want to create my perfect square term. Again, now we recognize that we have a five, right? And we can't have a number in front of our x squared when we want to go and complete the square. So then we gotta to move to our next step, which is going to be factor out your a. That's gonna be the coefficient of your x squared. Okay, so when we're factoring out an a, a lot of times that's gonna be easy when our number is divisible by both these terms. So five easily divides into five one time, right? Unfortunately in this problem, to make this problem so much more special, five does not evenly divide into a 12, but that is okay. We can still factor it out. But when we factor it out, it's just gonna look like as a fraction. And again, we can always check your work of factoring by just multiplying it back through to see if it does. And you can do that in your head. You don't actually have to multiply it back out. Just go ahead and look at it and make sure that it works. Okay, so now you can see that by factoring out the five, right? I get the x squared, which is what which I need. And then now I'm gonna do is a 12 divided by five. And again, I know that gets so confusing for a lot of students, but again, like just check your work. If I multiply the five times the x squared, I get five x squared. If I multiply the five times the 12 over five, then again, that the fives will divide out, that's gonna leave me with the 12x, right? So this is a perfectly factored out expression. Now, here's where the fractions come in and so handy. So by factoring out this term, right, that's a, that's a huge issue out of its own. The next issue is now we have these fractions. So the next step is we gotta be able to find the value C. Okay, so remember C is going to be the value that completes the square, right? That creates our perfect square trinomial. So when we're talking about B divided by two, we're talking about the middle term here, right? Don't go back to the 12. You know, it's very enticing to be like, that number, I wanna divide that by two and square it. No, 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 don't do that. You gotta take this number. And that's not gonna be so much fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it down here so we can see exactly how that's going to look. Okay, so it's very important here. I had a fraction divided by an integer two, right? And basically what I did is like dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half, right? And that's basically what I happened here is, you know, 12 divided by five, multiplying by one half, we give you 12 over 10. But you can see that really what I did is just multiply by the one half on top and bottom that got rid of the two, this denominator right here. And then I was just left over there. Then you have to square things. Um, 12 squared is 144, 10 squared is 100. So now in this problem, we're getting into some big, pretty big numbers, but that's okay. Like, don't, don't be afraid of big numbers, right? They're just, they're numbers too. So we got to treat all numbers equally. But what we need to do now is once we find our value C, now we need to make sure that we add it to our equation. So we got to find the value C. Now what we need to do is make sure we add it to our equation. Now, I don't really have this as a step. It's just one of those things you need to make sure that you're doing this correctly when you are doing this. So it's just very important to like, make sure that you're adding this value C inside of the parentheses, right? That is going to create that perfect square trinomial. You also have to understand is you just can't randomly add a number on an equation. Whatever you add on one side of the equation, you have to, have to add on the other side, or you could add and subtract on the same side. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this case. Also, remember, there's a lot that's going on. Whatever you add inside this equation is being multiplied by five. So when I subtract outside that equation, it also needs to be multiplied by five. Whew. All right, let's go ahead and write it out. So let's get a five times, let's see, x squared plus Okay, so a lot going on here. Um, again, just remember, you know, I added and subtracted the same number, right? And then also, since this is being multiplied by five, I had to multiply this by five. And then also don't forget the 32, right? A lot of students will always forget those 32s and it goes on from time to time. All right, now here's gonna be my perfect square trinomial. And this is really just comes into the last step, which is to simplify. That's what 
But just like the value of C, there was a lot of steps going on in here. This one, there's a lot that's going on too, just to simplify this. When we have something that's like easy to factor down as a perfect square trinomial, it's, you know, it's kind of simple. Or, you know, it's kind of simple to recognize a perfect square trinomial. When you're dealing with fractions, it can be kind of confusing. I'm like, how do I know what the perfect square trinomial, you know, how do I know what I'm going to be um, dealing with in this case? So it's really important to recognize this relationship. Okay, so assuming that we have a perfect square trinomial, and again, it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus, but I have x squared plus or minus by bx plus c, right? And again, remember, this is if it is a perfect square trinomial. Then that can be factored down into x plus or minus a b divided by 2. Did we already find out what b divided by 2 was? We did. B, our b divided by 2 was 12 over 10. So I don't need to think about like what two numbers multiply to give me 144 divided by, or 144 divided by 100 and add to give me 12 fifths. Like, that's a lot to think about, right? What I would do is just say, oh, it's just gonna be x plus or minus a 12 over 10, because that's my b divided by two. Now, how do you know if it's plus or minus? Look at your middle term. If the middle term here is positive, then your binomial is gonna be positive. If it's negative, if it's negative, then your binomial squared is gonna be negative. So now we can go ahead and simplify this. I'd also recommend that you go ahead and um, let's go ahead and simplify this. So instead of five over 100, let's go and rewrite that to a one over a 20. And then I would rewrite instead of a 32, I would also multiply this by a 20 over one, right? So you can have this over one, just multiply by 20 over 20, because again, we wanna have common fractions, right? I mean, or common denominators, I'm sorry. Again, we can always check our work, right? Just plus 12 over 10, uh, does that give you 144 over 100, or 144 over 100? Yes, it does, right? Just 12 over 10 plus 12 over 10, that's gonna give you 24 over 10. Does that reduce to 12 over five? Yes, it does, right? So now, and again, by doing this over here, by getting this common denominator, you can see that now I can add these two fractions. Like, it looks very confusing, but again, we can solve for this. So therefore, the numerator negative 144 plus a 640 is gonna be a negative 496. Which now I can divide by a four on top and bottom, which is now going to give me a 124 divided by five. So therefore I can divide this by the top and bottom by four over four. Um, therefore that's gonna give me 124 divided by five. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is a lot of work for one problem. So if you want a little completing the square hack, then go and check out my next video where we can simplify this whole process.